Taking a cruise is considered to be one of the most worry-free convenient forms of vacation. You hop on a ship, you visit multiple countries, and you eat and drink as much as you like. However, what if I were to tell you that there are things that you could do to cause your cruise to not go so great, or even ruin it? But have no fear, because today in this video, I'm going to tell you 10 things that people do to ruin their cruise, that way you can avoid them. By the way, today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp, but more on that later. The first thing that you can do to ruin your cruise is pick the wrong cruise. We're going to go into cruising 101 here for those of you out there that have never been on a cruise. You ain't got your sea legs yet. There are three different types of cruise lines out there. Well, technically there's 47 and a half. However, we'll stick to the three main ones that we were all on the same page here. You've got your standard or mainstream, you've got your premium, and you've got your luxury. Examples of each are as follows, but not limited to Carnival, Royal Caribbean, and Norwegian MSC for the mainstream and standard lines. For premium, we've got lines like Celebrity, Princess, and of course, you've got Virgin Voyages. For luxury, we have lines like Regent, Oceana, Cunard, and Ritz-Carlton. Between those categories, you can then break it down into sub-niches, if you will. For example, Virgin Voyages is an adult-only cruise line. Let's say you are going on a cruise and you don't care much for kids, you don't have any of your own. I don't think a Carnival or Royal Caribbean cruise would be best suited for you. Also, if somebody, let's say, has kids and they want to take a cruise, they probably shouldn't take them on an Alaskan cruise as their first cruise unless they have a genuine interest in the Alaskan area. They like whales and they want to climb mountains and play with puppy dogs and go sledding. Well, actually, that sounds fun no matter how you look at it. But you get my point here. If you want to party all day and night, maybe Princess isn't the one for you. That would be Virgin Voyages. If you want a butler to bring you caviar and afternoon tea, maybe Carnival isn't the one for you. You should try Cunard. My point here is that, yes, obviously these things are interchangeable, they're not absolute, but you should absolutely do some research to make sure you know which cruise line is the right fit for you, or at the very least contact a travel agent that is knowledgeable and can help you guide your way to your vacation of a lifetime. Number two, staying in your comfort zone. I get it, it's a cruise, you want to relax, kick back a little bit. However, if every day at 5 p.m. when you get off of work, you are going home eating potato chips and watching Netflix until you fall asleep and go to work the very next day, then it's time for you to to do something different. You should take hold of life, grab it by the reins, and explore a little bit. Take some risk. However, the caveat to that, you shouldn't take too many risks. I've seen people do stupid stuff. They don't know how to swim, but then they go to Jamaica and start jumping off waterfalls. They got a bad back, but they decide to try the surfing simulator. My point is, you should probably try to do some activities that you don't normally do, and just enjoy yourself. That way you have the best experience possible, and you can leave saying you expanded your horizons a little bit and tried something new. It's the best feeling. Number three, cruising with the wrong people. This is a big one. Make sure you pay attention to this because there are a multitude of scenarios in which, well, you're going to make a choice to sail with somebody or multiple people that is going to potentially ruin your cruise. For example, we've all seen the lovely families on board cruise ships. They're all wearing the matching shirts and next thing you know, they're arguing, yelling and screaming in the hallway because nobody can decide what excursion they're going to do when they get to camp. Cancun, Mexico. You have the relationship that wasn't exactly doing so hot on land, so you have the husband that decides to take his wife on a beautiful three to ten thousand dollar cruise, thinking he's going to rekindle the flames and, well, maybe do a little bit of bed wrestling on the way. However, they get into a fight and just like that, it turns into something that it didn't need to be. You may try to push and encourage somebody to take a cruise that doesn't want to go and it's not because they wouldn't enjoy it, it's because they're in a rough patch in their life. They are sad, they're down and well, they need some help outside of going on a cruise and just trying to drink all of their problems away. They may need therapy. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and talk about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. Growing up in a broken and poor family like I did tends to leave some pretty deep emotional scars. Those scars then make it difficult and extremely challenging to open up and trust others. However, as I grew up, I found something extremely life-changing, which was therapy. In a nutshell, it taught me to not fear forming meaningful relationships as I move forward forward in my life, all because of what I had went through in my past. Because of therapy, I was able to learn to trust again, and it changed my life. With all of that in mind, I am extremely thrilled to talk about today's video sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an incredible online resource that is helping people take back full control of their overall happiness and mental health. If you are ready to make a positive change for the better, then BetterHelp is the way to go as they will connect you with licensed therapists that will provide you 
with unbiased advice. This is valuable because you can speak to them without any biases, unlike talking to a friend or family member. These extremely professional therapists are dedicated to helping you identify and address your problems. From there, they will offer effective solutions to help resolve them. BetterHelp has a vast network of over 30,000 licensed professional therapists, ensuring that they find the right match for you. However, here's the best part. Let's say you and the therapist that you are working with don't have the best connection. We are human. This happens from time to time. Sometimes humans don't vibe well with other humans. You can switch out your therapist free of charge until you find the right match for you. Getting started with BetterHelp is quick and simple. Just simply click on the link below in the description box or pinned in the comment or go to betterhelp.com slash ship life. From there, you'll answer a couple of simple questions. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the most suitable and compatible therapist for you. After you've been matched with a therapist, you can schedule your therapy sessions at your own convenience, whether it's through phone, chat, or video. Taking care of your mental health is just as important as taking care of your physical health, especially in these crazy modern times that we are living in. I think we all can agree on that. But my point is that everyone can benefit from therapy. So why neglect it? You deserve happiness and now you can achieve it. Just click on the link below this video or go to betterhelp.com slash ship life to receive 10% off of your first month of therapy. The time has indeed come to take action in prioritizing your mental health. Success favors the bold as they say or something like that. Anyway, make sure you you click on that link and get started with better help they are an amazing resource that has helped me it can do the same for you by improving your mental health Number four, picking the wrong cabin. There are a lot of different styles of cabin. However, primarily you got your inside, you have your ocean view with the porthole window, you have your balcony, and then you got your suites. And there are subcategories like your junior suites and whatnot. Overall, let's say you're an icon of the seas, the world's newest and largest cruise ships, there are over 25 different cabin styles to choose from. So you wanna make sure you choose the right one. This goes into, of course, you doing a little bit of research or you can always contact your local travel agent and well you can go from there however you make the wrong decision let's say for example you get a little seasick you don't have your sea legs yet you decide to go in the front of the ship or the back of the ship and you get caught up in a storm and it's not going to be a nice time for you let's say you have trouble waking up in the morning you getting an inside cabin with no visible sunlight to help aid in the waking you up well, now you're going to miss out on half the day, half the festivities, and it's not going to be a great time. You decide to splurge one cruise and book a suite. You wanted it with all the fixings, the butler and hot tub, all of the, the other amenities. However, because of your lack of research, you find out that all of those other amenities like the hot tub and butler are for the next category up. So now you've spent an excess amount of money that you could have spent someplace else, and you have a suite that you didn't want. Number five, taking a cruise during the wrong time time of the year. Now technically there isn't a wrong time per se because there is a lot of room to play around for deals and let's say you're on a budget. Well, you taking a cruise during let's say hurricane season, even though you will be perfectly fine by the way, cruises are very safe, very technologically advanced. You may be able to find some deals. However, the drawback is that in the Caribbean, for example, the weather can be extremely unpredictable and since you decide to go during hurricane season, maybe there are going to be some storms in the way and you want to go jet skiing. Those plans have now been canceled. Let's say you want to party it up. You want to make some bad decisions. You decide to go on a cruise during spring break, a peak season, meaning it's going to be a lot more expensive for you to jump on a ship, like let's say a three-day booze cruise on Royal Caribbean's Freedom of the Seas or jumping on the Carnival Conquest than maybe you had budgeted for. However, if you got the money, by all means, spend it and go have a good time. Number six, arriving to the city in which your cruise ship is sailing out of the day of your cruise. This is a big, big no-no. Don't ever do this. A lot of people say, well, I don't have the time. I've got time restrictions and this is the only time I can cruise. I have to get off of work and then go to the airport the following morning. These are my only options. You need to do whatever you can to alleviate stress for your vacation. Let's say you decide you want to fly the day of your cruise from North Carolina to Miami and there's a snowstorm or anything that's going on from which that plane is originally coming from to pick you up in North Carolina. Now you have a delay and since you have a delay, you could either miss your cruise or you could arrive so late that you're running to the ship like a chicken with your head cut off.
while and it's not going to be a great time for you. Number seven, understanding what perks and features and amenities are included in your cruise. For example, there are people out there, I have done it once myself, thankfully I caught it early, that think that they bought the drink package and they didn't thoroughly read it, they just saw a promo for it and it wasn't included in the cruise, they didn't read the breakdown and now they've just spent a thousand dollars extra on their cruise they didn't intend to spend because they didn't do the proper research. However, on the flip side of that, let's say your cruise came with two free specialty dining options like the steakhouse and the seafood spot on board and you completely missed it. You also got free massages on board and spa access, but since you didn't read what was included with your cruise, now you have missed out on an opportunity. You find out toward the end of your cruise and just like that, most of it is now ruined. Number eight, thinking that you don't need to make a reservation to go to a dining option or a production show on board. Every cruise line does things differently. You have to keep that in mind. Something that Carnival may do is not the same as Norwegian, who was the pioneer of the freestyle cruising. Now it's just kind of like the standard for most cruise lines now. You may say, hey, it's freestyle. We can do whatever we want. Then you get to the comedy show. You find out you didn't book the comedy show. And now you're in the back of the line, in the waiting line. And you now are probably going to miss the show or you at the very least not going to get a good seat. Number nine, let's talk insurance, the dreaded word. We all know that nobody likes insurance. However, you should always do your research and shop around. The cruise lines offer it. However, if you have another supplier, you do want to get it because let's say, for example, you're on a cruise, you're going to tropical places, you may be doing some risky things or let's say some very athletic activity that you don't normally do. You break an ankle or something happens. And now you have to be medevaced and airlifted by a helicopter off of the cruise ship. Guess how much that's going to cost in the ballpark range of about $20,000 and you don't want to have to pay for that bill. It's just like car insurance. It's not something that you think about. It's not something that you want to do. However, when something happens like a car accident, I'm pretty sure you're happy that you have that insurance to cover yourself and potentially the other driver. Number nine, you don't relax a little. You're on a cruise, dance with somebody, eat a cookie. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with winding down a little bit. I get it. Job is stressful and you have all these other responsibilities back in the real world. A cruise is simply a good opportunity opportunity for you to have some fun and you should because you deserve it. Finally, for number 10, you should do your research on the destinations you are visiting as well as the excursions that you're going to purchase and indulge in. Why? Because let's say, for example, you just quickly looked when you got on board and booked with the cruise line because it looked kind of fun and you know that should something go wrong, which it probably won't over in the island, the ship will not leave you. You then take that excursion and now you have wasted your entire time being stuck at an all-inclusive that is not really that good when you found out that there are better things to do on the island. You should always, always, always do your research to the best of your ability. Anywho, that's what I got for today's video. Let me know if you want me to do more of these. I do want to start doing tips and giving you guys all some advice if you want it or not, but just let me know in the comment section below. I'd greatly appreciate it. Hit that like button on your way out. Subscribe if you haven't already. And know as usual, I love and appreciate every single one of you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Take it easy.